Now for these figures here, we're actually calculate the value of the lettered angles. Like for example, for the first figure here, we're to calculate the value of um, Q, R, S, T. For this one, we're to calculate the value of C. And for this one, we're to calculate the value of Y. So we'll start with the first figure here. Now, anytime you are given figures like this and you ask to calculate the value of the lettered angles, what you do is just look at the diagram, look at the figure very, very well. I'm trying to bring out some deductions. For example, here you'll notice that the um, we can bring out um, the we can bring out something that looks like Z out of this. See, now you see this is actually this looks like Z, but it's like this is Z, but Z in the opposite um, in the opposite manner. See, this is Z, but Z in the opposite in the reverse manner. So that's so that this this looks like Z. So because it looks like Z, we we'll say the angle Q is equal to the angle 42 because the angles are alternate angle. You notice this line is a parallel line. This line is also a parallel line, and we have something like a transversal. This line, this line that is actually touching the two point two parallel lines, is called the transversal. So we have a transversal between the two parallel lines. So the angle Q is equal to the angle forty two degrees because the angles are alternate angles. So that type of angle is called an alternate angle. So when you have something like Z, the angle here and the angle here are alternate angles and alternate angles are equal. Or if it looks like this, if it looks like this, the angle and the angle here and the angle here are alternate angles as far as the two lines are parallel lines. So let's apply that same concept. So we'll just come here, we'll just say the angle Q is equal to the angle 42 degrees because the angles are alternate 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 angles you can just put angles this represents angles angles okay so we have um q as 42 degrees the next thing we can calculate here is the angle r what we we'll just do is you remember that for interior angles like this let's say we have something like this Let's see, let's just mark, trace this out like this. Anytime you are giving questions like this, just try to look into the question and remember your alternate angles, co interior angles, and corresponding angles. Now, this because we have these two angles, Q and R, in this, inside this, um, inside this, let's just say this shape like this, we we'll call Q and R co interior angle. This looks like this looks like C. It looks like C. So because the angles are inside this um, this figure, so to say, we call these angles co-interior. Interior means inside. The two angles are inside. We call the two angles co-interior angles. And co-interior angles are always supplementary. So since co-interior, what we mean by co-interior angles are supplementary is that by the time you add the two interior angles, it will always sum up to 180 degrees. So here we'll just say Q. That's Q degrees plus R degrees. R degrees is equal to 180 degrees. So I'll just write equal to 180 degrees. This is co interior, co interior angles. That's the co interior angles for parallel lines. Parallel lines. Now these two slash here represents parallel lines. So co interior angles for parallel lines. So here we'll just see. Now we have Q as 42 degrees plus we have R, R is unknown, we don't have R presently, we need to find R equal to 180 degrees. So this is 180 degrees. So we can just say R here is equal to 180 degrees minus 42 degrees. 180 minus 42 degrees here will give us R equal to 138 degrees. So it means R here is 138 degrees. Then Q here, Q here is equal to um, 42 degrees. That's what we had before. Now we have R as 138 degrees. We can easily find T here. Now the reason why I say we can easily find T here is because if you notice here, if you notice here, we'll just look again. Notice here, in this figure here, this angle T and 117 are co interior angles because the angles are inside the figure. The two angles are inside the figure, like this. So these angles are co interior angles, and co interior angles are supplementary. So we can just use that concept. So once you know all these concepts in your mind, you can't, you can, you can actually solve any of these problems any of these problems once you have the um, the um, those theorems in your mind so just put those theorems in your mind co interior angles are supplementary angles so here we'll just write let me just bring this down a bit we'll just say the angle t plus the angle 117 degrees is equal to 180 degrees so we'll just say the angle t 
plus the angle 117 degrees I'll just write 117 degrees is equal to is equal to 180 degrees this is cool interior cool interior angles that's for parallel lines for parallel lines cool interior or you could just write cool interior angles so this would be t is equal to I'll just write here that T is equal to 180 degrees minus 117 degrees, 117 degrees, and this will give us T is equal to we'll just write T T equal. This implies that T is equal to 180 minus 117 here will give us 63 degrees. So we have T as 63 degrees. So we have T there. And let's go up again. So you notice here for this figure, this is Z. This is Z. This this figure looks like Z here. Okay, so since it looks like Z, it means this angle here and this angle here are alternate angles. So we'll just apply the same concept here. The angle S here and the angle T here are alternate angles, and alternate angles are equal. So since alternate angles are equal, it means since the angle T is 63 degrees, the angle S would also be 63 degrees. So I'll just put this angle as 63 degrees so we can just write down that the angle s is equal to six the angle s is equal to the angle t which is equal to the angle t is 63 degrees so we're just saying alternate angles alternate angles okay so that's the reason so we are true with that let's go to the next question here now you see this one this line here and this line are parallel lines they are parallel they would never ever meet they would never ever meet this shows the direction in which the parallel lines are going so they are parallel lines that will never ever meet now since these two lines are parallel lines let's what we'll do here to get the angle c here is we'll just take you know you see when you are giving question like this the first thing is to try to look at the question what can i you just ask yourself what can i do to get the value of this particular angle so you try to think about it. Don't just say I don't know the question. No, that's not how to solve any problem. Look at the question and try to tell us, ask yourself, what can I do to actually solve this problem? So once you do that, once you ask yourself that question, answers start coming immediately. So here, what we can do is we'll just draw a line parallel to this line and this line. So what we'll just do is we'll draw a line parallel, we'll draw a line through this point that is going to be parallel to the two other lines so i'll just do this like this to mean to show that okay this line is parallel to the two other lines they will never ever meet now if you notice something we can just say that the angle that will be formed here that this angle that will be formed here and the angle that will be formed here let me use yellow the angle that will be formed here now we can bring out something from these angles here now you notice that let, let's say this angle here is angle a and let's say this angle here is angle B, for example. This is angle B. Now, this angle A and the angle 110 degrees are co interior angles. Now, the reason why I said the two angles are co interior angles, you can see. You see? The two angles are inside this, um, this figure. So, they are inside like that. So, we'll call the two angles co interior angles. So, we can easily find A. Now, if you look at this one also, these are co interior angles. The two angles are inside this um, figure here. So we we'll call these two angles co-interior angles. So with this, we can easily find we can easily find B there. We can easily find B. Now, once we find A and B here, what we'll just do is we'll say the sum of the angles at the point on the straight line is equal to 180 degrees. You know, sum of angles at the point on the straight line is 180 degrees. So we'll just add A plus B plus C will be equal to 180. Then we'll easily get the value of C. So let's do this together. We'll would say, we we'll would say a plus co interior angles we say a plus 110 110 degrees is equal to 180 degrees we'll just write 180 180 degrees that's co interior angles so we could just write co interior co interior angles so here we could just find a would say a is equal to now this would be 180 degrees minus 110 degrees minus 110 degrees and would have a is equal to 70 degrees so a here is 70 degrees now let's find b would apply the same concept to say b plus 140 degrees 140 degrees is equal to 180 degrees we'll just write 
180 degrees the same co interior angles is right co interior angles meaning that these two angles are co interior angles and co interior angles are supplementary so we'll just write b is equal to 180 degrees minus 140 degrees 140 degrees so we'll just have b is equal to 180 minus 140 will give us 40 degrees so it means this angle here is 40 degrees now since we have a and b as 40 degrees this is let's just put this point as point x here so we have at this point we have on at this point on the straight line this point on the straight line we have the angle a we have the angle b and we need to find the angle c and you know the some of the angles on the straight line if you have a straight line like this and this is point x for example if this is a this is b and this is c so the sum of the angles at this point on this straight line is called is equal to 180 degrees as if you add a plus b plus c all, of it, all the angles they will sum up to 180 degrees so we'll use the same concept to find the angle c so we'll say the angle a which is 70 degrees would we'll write angle a is 70 degrees let's we'll say 70 degrees plus the angle b write the angle b which is 40 degrees plus the angle c which is what we need equal to 180 degrees I'll just write 180 degrees so here 70 plus 40 will give us some um, 70 plus 40 here get 1 1 0 degrees plus C which is equal to 180 degrees oh, this should be let's be consistent a bit so that will be um C so we'll just say C is equal to 180 degrees I'll just say C is equal to 180 degrees minus 110 degrees. So it means C is equal to 70 degrees. So C there is equal to 70 degrees. Now let's go to the next question. We've gotten C as 70 degrees, so we are good to go. So let's go to the next question here. This one we are asked to find the value of Y. Now to get the value of Y, what we'll just do here is we can use the concept of co interior angles here because the angles here are more than two. We have three angles here. So what you can just do is we can just produce this line, just produce this line out like this. Just bring the line out like this. Bring this one out also like this. Bring this out there. And also this one to bring this line here, we can also produce this one out here. We can produce one out here like this. Now here you will agree with me that this angle here, for this angle, look at this. Just look at this. Now for this angle 144, we can also say this angle here and the angle 144 are alternate angles. So this looks like Z in the opposite direction or S. It looks like Z or S. Z or S. So and anytime you see a figure like this, you see the, these two angles, the angle 144 and this angle here are alternate angles. So we'll just say we'll just say the angle 144 and this angle here. This angle here would also be 144 degrees. So let's say the angle here is um, A, for example. So the angle A here is going to be 144 degrees. So we'll say, since this is A here, we'll just say A is equal to 144 degrees. That's alternate, alternate angles. It's always good you explain the reason why you do anything in, when you solve problems in maths like this. So this is 144 degrees. Now, also, if you look at this, look at this very well, and notice this looks like Z. It looks like Z. So it means that the angle here, it means the angle here is equal to the angle here. The angles are alternate angles. That's the meaning. So what we'll just do here is, if this is Y, it means that this angle here would also be Y. But instead of putting this as Y, let's put this as Q. At the moment, let's just leave this as Q. So what would apply here is a term that says that the sum of the angles at the point is equal to 360 degrees. So we'll just say Q plus 144 degrees, 144 degrees plus 68 degrees, or we'll that 68 degrees is equal to 360 degrees. I'll just write 360 degrees. That's you explain. You see, sum of angles at a point some of angles at the point so that's that's why we actually say this is equal to 360 when you sum the angles like this at the particular point like this is not you notice this is not a straight line these are the particular point so the sum of angle round like this is 360 degrees so we'll just say here that 
q is equal to no, this looks like g we'll just say that q is equal to 144 plus 68 here will give us let me remove this 144 plus 68 here will give us 212 degrees equal to 360 degrees so i'll just write 360 degrees 360 so we'll have q is equal to 360 degrees minus 212, 360 degrees minus 212, 212 degrees. So we'll have Q is equal to, by the time you subtract that, 360 minus 212 give us 148 degrees. Now, you, you know we just said that the angle Q is equal to the angle Y because the angles are alternate angles. So since Q equal to Y, since Q is equal to Y, since Q is equal to Y, it means that Y would also be equal to 148 degrees. So Y here is equal to 148 degrees. And that's because the angles are alternate angles. So you can explain alternate angles. That's alternate angles. So Q, Y is equal to 148 degrees. And that's just it.